Hey guys, you're listening to our Orville Review, and I'm Toby, and I'm joined on this journey by Steve. Hi Toby. And each week we'll share our opinions on the latest episode of the series. This week it's Domino. If you love the Orville, like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you thought of the episode. And don't forget, we release new episodes of our Star Trek's Change New Worlds podcast review every week. So Steve, this episode, I think it takes it up a notch. I think this is probably one of my favourite ones of the season. This episode was excellent and well thought out. I liked Ensign Burke's story arc. What I didn't realise was that obviously they weren't going to take her character all the way through to the end of the season. And when you start off with her, she kind of irritates you. Right. But actually, when you get to this episode and you watch the whole thing, her character was perfect. Absolutely perfect. From the very first time you see her to her very last scene. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Could you think of any way, better way of writing her? She didn't win. She didn't argue. She didn't moan. She just did her job and she did it very, very well. Yeah. As an officer, at that point, you would be sad to see her go. Yeah, absolutely. Early on, you'd be thinking, oh, well, <laughs> she was a bit annoying. She was yeah. a bit depressing. Yeah. At least I've got rid of that. Yes. But her journey over what? nine episodes just brilliant absolutely brilliant the mocklands have gone to the krill and they demand an alliance and they say look we've got the weaponry you've got the manpower let's join forces but we're a man you're a woman we'll be in charge i was like will they not learn (laughs) (laughs) yeah this hasn't worked so far (laughs) what i would have liked and i know obviously you've only got so much time to do everything in but i really would like to have seen the krill plan to double cross I think it's almost implied, though, when you're dealing with Talea now, that there is going to be treachery. There is going to be double dealings. Yeah. Just expect it. Yeah. I just wanted the Mocklands to feel it a little bit. They should have been uneasy talking to a female, and yet they just didn't have that uneasiness when they left that meeting. I was like, hmm, that's a shame. Meanwhile, on the Orville, we've got the testing of the new Pulse weapon. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. Yeah. And the graphics on it. When that wave came out and destroyed all those vessels, absolutely awesome. It was an amazing moment. That's all I can say. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. When that fight sequence started and you've got all the ships huddled together, I thought, why are they so close? They're just going to get picked off one by one. Yeah. And of course, then the weapons launch and the pulse comes out and I'm like, oh, I love that. Yeah, it looked mightily impressive. That's all I can say. I was clapping my hands. (laughs) (laughs) But I liked that it was Isaac and Charlie. You know, Charlie hated Isaac. Charlie would never have done anything for Isaac. Now she is working alongside him to develop a weapon to take the case on out. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant writing. Yes, it was. And the way they did the weapon, it was like this synchronization matrix or something that they can use to feed back the energy to destroy the vessels. Very clever. Yeah, absolutely. And I believed it, so I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It wasn't just made up techno babble. When they explained it, you followed it, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Problem is, it was so effective, the union wants to use it to get rid of the Kalon threat. I loved that straight away, Ed and Kelly, in that conversation with the Admiral, are like, well, is it right that we commit genocide to stop them from killing others? We are then exactly who they are. Yeah, yeah. You've become them. Exactly. It was a very good conversation and it led to the union higher ups discussing it. And they agreed, rightfully so, that they should go to the Kalon primary and say, This is what we've got. We can use it. We don't want to. But if you back down, yeah. let's talk, let's get a treaty. Yeah. You know, and stick to our own devices. Again, they got to Kalon quite easy. Similar thing with going to Krill yeah. a couple of episodes ago. It makes it feel like the Orville universe is not that big. There was no defence platforms. You'd never get to the heart of Borg space, for example. (laughs) That would have been a two-part epic story, wouldn't it? Yeah. If that was happening. So it was just a a little bugbear. I mean, you can overlook it in the great scheme of things, but it was just one of those things I thought, you know what? You couldn't have got there with no interception whatsoever. It's impossible. Yeah. But that aside, they used it twice. And then the third time, they didn't put up a fight. They just said, come down, let's have a chat. And I was like, so you're taking the Orville down to the planet. And what turns out to be the only one of that weapon, and you're putting it into Kalon hands. Yeah. I'm like, are you mental? Yeah, I I agree. 
I wouldn't have done that if I was in command. I would have been like, that's the last thing I'm taking down to that planet. We'll go down in a shuttle, you know, or you come and get us or come up to us and we'll have a chat. It did feel like it was an unnecessary risk. You're, you're so right, yeah. Kalon's agree to surrender, but I love the little conversation the primary has. And he says, you know, we will eventually find a weakness. Yeah. And then he says, your existence is proof of that, Isaac, because everything has a weakness. That is so harsh. But it's so true. Obviously, this is now done. So the agreement's in place. And the crew take a rest in the very similar to Dolly Parton's cabin <laughs> last week. <laughs> I noticed there was a few rehash of some sets. <laughs> and Charlie can sing. Yeah, yeah. I did part expect Dolly to come out for another audition. Yeah, you just see her eyebrows behind the bush. <laughs> She's waiting backstage. And then, and then Ed came out. Onto the balcony, he was like, you and Gorgeous are thinking those I was like, no, no, shut up. <laughs> I don't need another one. So did you find the whole conversation in, in the cabin a bit boring? It didn't seem to go anywhere. No, it didn't. I, but I felt like the, the song that they sang, I don't know if you listened to it, but it seemed quite relevant for the episode. Oh, they always choose relevant songs. Yeah. In that respect, yeah, they're always yeah. quite nice. Despite me not wanting them to sing, because I usually it just isn't my thing. I, but I actually felt like the song was really relevant. One thing I did like in the cabin was Clyden trying to crunch the nuts. Yes. Tyler's just like, crunch, here you go. And then Borders is like, you've embarrassed us. <laughs> we look like bumbling <laughs> fools. I just thought it was brilliant. Oh, so whilst the crew are relaxing in Dolly Parton's cabin, we've got the device being stolen from Earth. Yes. By Team Echo on behalf of Admiral Perry. Naughty Ted Danson. How dare he? <laughs> He's not allowed to be a bad guy. I was like, oh, and of course, because Taylor killed him as well, you're just like, oh, he's gone now. I know. What could he do anyway? I mean, he used his own passcodes to facilitate stealing the thing. When it first started, because I hadn't realised that it was him doing it, I was like, this is way too easy. You have a super powerful weapon, and look how easy it was to steal. I gotta say, my first thought that went through my head when that guy was walking into that room was, he's not human, he's Krill. Yeah. With a hologram. That was me too. And then I jumped to, what if the Kalons have got a secret weapon that they can turn up in human form now? I was like, is this going to go Battlestar Galactica on us? <laughs> yes, they've evolved. And so and so, yeah, yeah. You'd want to avoid that, surely. Oh, yeah, you couldn't do it. But it, it did cross my mind. I thought that would be a nice little twist if they did something like they were developing human tech. And then that in itself gave them emotions so that by becoming human, they actually developed the understanding of what human emotions were. So they understood that not everyone would be the same as their creator. I thought that would be an interesting, but I'm glad they didn't. The way they went was brilliant. Obviously, got the device now, take it to Krill. Mm -hmm. To lay is all like, oh, let's take it to a scientist who can use it. Because only Charlie and Isaac know how to operate it properly. Right. Uh, this scientist gets it, puts it on his little outpost, and he's got a conveniently gigantic quantum drive just there for what he needs, I suppose. And Baltus just goes on the bridge. He says, oh, I know where they take it. They take it to scientist X, whatever his name is. Dr. Kaffler. Yeah, I'm like, would you? Would you know that? Would you really? I don't know. He must have been up to date on Mocklin society and prominent positions, I suppose. You wouldn't just go, that's the one scientist. Yeah. You'd go, oh, do you know what? There's a couple of prominent scientists. I would imagine it would be one of these. Which one do you recommend? And then have a look at the sector of space and go, this is the one that would probably be the most likely. Yeah. Just rule it out. Not just go, this is where they're gone. And oh, I'm conveniently correct. <laughs> yeah, you've got a point there. Maybe they could have done a little bit more on that. Kelly and co getting a cloak shuttle. It's getting destroyed, so they skydive down. I love that whole sequence. Yeah, it was brilliant. I was kind of expecting when you saw this big, long, blue tunnel thing that maybe they were going to fire something down an exhaust pipe. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't, because that would have been very Star Wars. <laughs> and they get in there, they fight their way through corridors, which look very similar to last week's episode. But they are Mockland corridors, so they're allowed to look similar. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say that I thought they were exactly the same, to be honest. <laughs> well, just different coloured lights. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. One was a Mocklin torture chamber and the other one's a Mocklin scientist lab. So it's not unreasonable that they'd use similar corridors, is it? No, no, that's true. 
I loved the Kelly Talea fight. The little go betweens between the two of them. Yeah, it was brilliant. You need a dermatologist. Straight away, I was like, is that not kind of racist to say that? Uh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it's the way that when Kelly has that blood marks on her and the little scar mark, and she gets up and she's all like, I have not finished with you. You're like, go, Kelly. <laughs> as long as she wins, I'm happy. <laughs> With Kelly, the more you throw at her like that, the more she rises. Did you notice as well, when they're in the log cabin, she's the one with the heavy drink. You see, with the bottle of rum. I'm like, how is that still there? (laughs) (laughs) Dad said to save for a special occasion. You just think she's got a whole fridge full of what Dad told her to save for a special occasion. (laughs) This special occasion is a Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The fight was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I, I I liked all of it. Um, Tala's busy for a while and then conveniently turns up at the end because they knew she would just take that woman out. Yeah. Yeah. Because she just disappears after opening the door. That's right, she does. Then we go back to the... What I can say is probably one of the most overly inconvenient and elaborate mechanisms to launch an evil device. It takes so long to power up. What do you then do once it's fully powered is initiate the countdown. Why? I said, why have a countdown? It just took eight minutes to load. <laughs> it's like a loading screen for a loading screen. No. I know, I know. It was. It's like back in the old days when you had dial-up and you were waiting for naked pictures of Captain Janeway to download. <laughs> now you're showing your age. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> As much as obviously you need these things in place for tension and get all that. But it was just very convenient, very easy, and it gave Charlie plenty of time to do what she needed to do. And it also allowed for the whole exchange between the Mocklands fleeing. The Mocklands fleeing, they had no weapon. And they were fleeing that room. And the primary just killed them. Yeah. Didn't ask, didn't stop, didn't say freeze, just bang, 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 gone. Then the other scientist, the main scientist, he pulls out a weapon. And Isaac just shoots the weapon out of his hand. That's it. Now, Primary's like, why didn't you kill him? And he's like, because it wasn't warranted. We didn't need to kill him, which I liked. The Primary realises that Isaac has changed. Yes. But it was when Charlie says, I have to stay, I have to stop this sequence by overloading the core. Because even once you've initiated the countdown sequence, you can't stop the countdown sequence. I mean, who puts all that rubbish into a system? Nobody <laughs> does that. I know, I know. I just thought I just thought it was crazy. And I actually still expected her to be there. Do you, do you know what I mean? I still expected the happy ending. I wasn't expecting her to die. Just I didn't see it coming at all. I think it was a lovely exchange. And it was nice to see the primary stop and look back and see Charlie. But there was no question in Charlie's mind when Charlie said, I'm staying. It wasn't a big debate. Kelly didn't say, I'm staying. It wasn't an exchange. It was just, I'm staying. You get out. Go. Yeah. Primary noticed that, walked away. And it was that one action by Charlie, which has been built up to for the whole season, that then enables the Kalons to sit down in the headquarters at the end of the episode and agree to join the union. I never would have thought by the end of the season that would happen. I agree. I, I didn't see it at all. My guess was that the Kalon would deal with the Krill first. Mm. So when this happened, I was like, oh, wow. So this really leaves this last episode all up in the air as to what it's going to be about. I wouldn't have thought this would happen halfway through this episode. I agree. I didn't see this at all. At the end of the episode now, we have to Leia in custody and Ed goes to visit her. And straight away, she's like, I will give you your daughter in exchange for my freedom. Yeah. He's just like, I'm fed up with you. Yes. He will go and find his daughter himself. Yeah. And they ended it brilliantly in the sense like, so long as I'm locked up, you will never see her. Yeah. That's the best thing that she could have said to sow the seeds of doubt in his mind. Do you think this then is going to lead into the finale, which is future unknown? But I think it's going to be the hunt for his daughter. I do too. I mean, you think now Talia is out of the way, this opens up a big vacuum for political Mm. leadership on Krill. So in the place of all the episodes this season, where do you rank this? Me, top. Uh, Yes. Yeah, brilliant. All the way through. Yeah, I mean, anything that I've said that was negative was only negative because it was just me being really, really nitpicky. Just finding faults. It was an excellent episode. It was. I am really looking forward to the last episode, but I am also dreading it. Yeah, me too. Because potentially it could be the last ever one. So that'll be very sad when I'm watching that. Yeah. So don't forget to like and subscribe and share. And if you talk about the Orville 
anywhere on social media, use the hashtag we knew the Orville and make sure you include Disney Plus in that hashtag just to make them know we want more Orville. All done. So that's it for another episode of the Orville Review. Thanks for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe so we can be notified when we release the next episode, the season finale, Future Unknown. <laughs>